Hi, I'm Pavel Spechalski and it's been a while since we had a long, nice iNav tutorial of how to set up iNav on the quadcopter. Anything from 3 inch to 7 inch, you know, the modern mini quads, flippity floppy or just long range or cruiser type. Previously, I recorded a tutorial like that in 2019. That was really like quite a while ago. So now in the 2021, right after iNav 3.0 was, released let's do the same thing and let's go step by step on how to set up iNav 3.0 with this modern quad with the modern radio link modern digital fpv because it has the digital uh, dji digital fpv modern gps and everything relatively modern there will be at least a few parts of this video because nobody would watch one two hours no maybe two hours one one hour long video so let's divide it into smaller segment and let's go from beginning from flashing to the first flight of the inf 3.0 on the modern quadcopter bear in mind we will cover everything including gps and flight modes uh, if you just want to skip the gps you can just skip the gps because still the knowledge about how to make your quad fly great with inf 3.0 will be absolutely the same so let's go and let's begin with flashing and calibration Flashing was covered so many times, so let's not go to details. All you have to do to flash INAV into a supported flight controller is to get your flight controller, locate a button over here that activates the boot mode, press the button, plug in the USB cable, and you are almost ready for flashing. Now, when we go to the INAV configurator, you should see the DFU mode selected. That means that the flight controller is ready for flashing. So all you have to do is go to the firmware flash flasher, choose a correct board. I will be doing this on the Mattec H7. Yes, the H743 with the full chip erase. This is very important. When flashing between the releases of INAV, it's the best way idea to always have have the full chip raised on and of course I'm gonna choose the INAF 3.0.1 no need to change anything else no reboot sequence should be off manual baud rate should be off and unstable releases when you do not want to flash the unstable releases should be off now load firmware local no problem get yourself together load firmware online and after you will see the release notes and the information that the correct target was loaded all we have to do is press flash firmware bear in mind in the process including full arrays of the chip might take a while but it's fine it's supposed to run exactly like that after seeing the programming successful message and that the COM port was successfully detected, it's time to connect to the INAP configurator for the first time when we will see the dialog called the default values. This is probably one of the most important dialogs and I do suggest to correctly set up everything because it will prepare INAP to run exactly what you want to be running. In our case, it will be mini quad between three and seven inches propellers so hit it wait for a moment it might take a second or two for all the setting to be applied device will reboot and our PID controller and other filtering will be set up exactly to cover what we need for the mini quad doesn't matter if this will be flippy de floppy cruising around the tree or long range machine now now we are here it's time to start setting things up the first step should be go to the ports tab and set up exactly how we connect the different devices to our serial ports by default you might see a screen like that but most probably it's not really how you connect the things and in your case it just might be a different situation in my case i have a serial receiver which is the immersion rc ghost connected on the serial port 3 so i have to uncheck this on serial port 6 on serial port 4 I have connected the DGI digital 
uh, system. So I have to set up correctly as the DJI FPV VTX, not the MSP like in the beta flight. We have a separate uh, setting over here. On the UART 6 uh, I'm running the Matic Opflow sensor so I'm gonna enable this uh, over here. Finally on the UART 7 I have connected the GPS and on the UART 8 I have connected the ESC telemetry from the BL Heli 32 so I'm gonna leave this setting enabled over here. And now after hitting save and reboot soon we will be able to verify if everything is working. Okay, now, now it's time to go into the configuration tab. And because during the first runs we never really configured everything, it's time to verify. Do not touch the flight controller loop time, really doesn't matter uh, what you're gonna set here. You might, however, try setting the I2C speed if you are using the magnetometer to 800 kHz. Check if the accelerometer, magnetometer, barometer were detected successfully and because I'm using the MSP connected Matic Opflow I'm gonna just for just to be sure enable Opflow and the range finder on the MSP protocol. Now now also let's verify that the GPS is enabled with the protocol Ublox. I'm using the M9N so I'm 100% safe to stay with the default Ublox implementation and because uh, some Sometimes extra accuracy is uh, useful, I'm gonna auto detect ground assistant type. So if the extra satellites that are optimized for the area where you are flying uh, will be available, the GPS accuracy will be increased uh, or just because I'm in Europe use European EGNOS and also because I'm in Europe I'm gonna check the Galileo satellites to have this thing enabled. Do not touch anything else over here because it was mostly preset up and predefined by the default dialog and there is really no need to set up anything over here. Save and reboot and let's see if our hardware was correctly detected. Yep, we have a full suit. We have the gyro detected, accelerometer detected, magnetometer detected, barometer detected, GPS detected, opflow sensor detected, and the sonar actually leader, laser range finder also detected. That means that our hardware is 100% detected correctly. One more thing, if you already know the current metal calibration for the ES for the current measurement thing, usually the shunt resistor somewhere in your 4-in-1 ESC uh, or the PDB, this is the time to enter this value into the current metal scale. Sometimes you know it, sometimes uh, you were able to calibrate it previously, sometimes the manufacturer or the PDB or the ESC will give you this value. If not, fear not, I have a separate video on how to exactly calibrate the current metal scale, but we will not cover this next time. Definitely do not change anything about the voltage scale or battery settings yet and do not touch reversible motors for sure. One more time, save and reboot just to be sure and let's continue our adventure. And that covers the part one. In the part two, we will go into calibration and other slightly more probably interesting things that will help you get your iNav equipped quad into the air and get the maximum performance out of it. So, see you next time.